Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And I wanted to do a short podcast about covert narcissists and red flags with them because I did a reel and I talked about how there's always red flags when dealing with a narcissist. And I had somebody who said, oh, you know, there were no red flags in a year. And I said, that is impossible. There is always red flags. You just have to be aware of those red flags, whether they're, you know, ignoring you, how they're talking to you. And I had somebody get on the post and say, well, maybe for a regular narcissist, an overt narcissist or grandiose narcissist, there's red flags. But with a covert narcissist, she said, there are no red flags. There are absolutely red flags when it comes to a covert narcissist. You just have to understand the covert narcissist in order to recognize those red flags. So when we talk about covert narcissists, the first thing that has to come into mind is that they are passive aggressive. Covert narcissists don't come out and tell you what's on their minds. And this is why people say they are the most dangerous because you don't see it coming, all right? They're indirect. They're sarcastic. They make indirect comments. You can never kind of hold it to them because they're not direct with it. And they'll try to say, oh, you're crazy, or I didn't mean it like that, or you took it the wrong way, you're sensitive, okay? But you've got, it's up to you, all right, to recognize the covert narcissist. So when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, one of the things that you've got to recognize is the nonverbal language of the covert narcissist. A covert narcissist will show you, you know, what's on their mind by their body language and their actions. So what are some of these things? The covert narcissist, in other words, let's say you're talking and the covert narcissist rolls their eyes. They love to roll their eyes. They're not going to come out and communicate and tell you they disagree with you because they're basic cowards, but they'll do something like roll their eyes. They'll give you a smirk. You know, they'll have a blank stare. They won't let you know what's th- what they're thinking. Like, let's say you try to sit down and have a talk with a covert narcissist to resolve conflict. That covert narcissist is going to sit there like a stone with a blank face on. They're going to try to not show what they're thinking internally. So they sit there with a poker face on. And this is why they're so hard to read. But you've got to be able to read them. Okay. Number one, some of the red flags are when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, they will never validate you. Okay. So let's say that you're going through something rough and you bring these things up to the covert narcissist. Instead of them having empathy for you, which they don't, all right, what they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, that's all in your head or you're so dramatic. You're all about drama. They're going to break down and shoot down your credibility and say, you know, like there's something mentally wrong with you. When you're dealing with a covert narcissist, understand this. They want to, you know, attack your mental state. That's why they always say you're crazy. The minute that a covert narcissist calls you crazy is the minute that you know you got them. All right. They don't know what else to say except to call you crazy or just walk out, stonewall you in the middle of a sentence, walk out and then go no contact and give you the silent treatment because you got them, because they can't handle the truth. Anytime you face a covert narcissist with something they don't want to hear, or you you, you hit them with the truth, or they got to take accountability, they're going to do the one of those two things. They're either going to call you crazy, call you sensitive, or they're not going to even let you finish your sentence. They're going to cut you off, and they're going to walk out in the middle of it and and disappear, okay? They're not even going to listen to you. Because the thing with a covert narcissist is they always want to think they're better than you. So they're very dismissive. So the minute that you see any kind of dismissive signs, all right, that is your red flag that you're dealing with a covert narcissist. How are they dismissive? You know, they won't acknowledge or validate what you're saying. They won't agree with you. 
Or a lot of times when you're trying to, you know, talk to a covert narcissist, they got their back to you or they pretend that they don't hear you. Covert narcissists, a lot of times too, they will ignore you around other people. They'll be real nice to other people and they will make like you don't even exist in the room because what they're trying to do is make you feel like you're nothing, okay? So you've got to go by your internal feelings, your gut. Your gut is God's way of telling you something isn't right and you've got to trust it, all right? How is this person making you feel? Are they making you feel like you're not heard? Are they making you feel like there's something wrong with you, that you're sitting there and you're doubting yourself and you're questioning yourself? And this is how a covert narcissist gaslights you. They'll say something to you to the effect of, well, it didn't happen like that, okay? And what is that going to do? You're going to automatically, because you self-reflect and they don't, you're going to sit there and say, well, maybe it didn't happen like that. Do I got this wrong? And now... The covert narcissist knows they got you because you are doubting yourself. You've got to be, you know, you've got to be steadfast with it when it comes to the facts. You've got to know your shit, all right? You've got to know your shit if you're walking into court. You've got to know your shit when you're dealing with a narcissist that's trying to gaslight you. And you've got to hold strong and be like, no, this happened like this. And when that covert narcissist tries to gaslight you or discredit your character, that's when you disengage and say, we're done here. And you walk away because you're letting that covert narcissist know you're not going to do this. You're not going to continue with your word salad and give me that BS. And you're not going to discredit my character. And when they try to do that, when they try to talk down, to you, that's when you got to check them and you got to say, until you talk to me with respect, you and I will not be talking. That's your way of letting them know that you're not going to deal with somebody who's going to cut you up or, or, or challenge your mental state. Because you know what? There's nothing wrong with your mental state. What's wrong is that the covert narcissist can't handle you speaking the truth and calling them out on their bullshit, all right? So these are all red flags. Ding, ding, okay? So you got the blank stare of the covert narcissist. You've got the dismissiveness. And you've got the passive-aggressive behavior, okay? They're sarcastic, Covert narcissists love to use sarcasm. They cut jokes. So I always say, what's your red flag? Your red flag is when they make a joke and you don't feel good about it, all right? If if a joke, you know, I don't care if it's a joke or not. If it's making you feel uncomfortable or it's hurting you in some way, they are being passive aggressive and indirectly hurting you. So how go by how you feel after they make that joke. And that's not okay. You've got to make a mental note of that and say, you know what? They're trying to cut me up indirectly. They're trying to be passive aggressive. So you guys, you've got to research passive aggressive behavior to understand the covert narcissist. Sometimes they'll say they'll do something and they'll do something and they'll have a face on. So this is why you have to look at their actions. You know, you have to look at their body language and their actions to spot that covert narcissist. Okay, this is crucial because so many people need to hear it. They need to be told, you know, like it's a lot easier dealing with somebody who comes at you because you know where they stand. When you deal with a covert narcissist, you don't know where they stand because they don't want you to know where they stand. They want to keep you in the dark. Half the time you deal with a covert narcissist, you don't know if things are okay or they're not okay. Because what a covert narcissist is going to do is they're going to tell you, yeah, everything's okay. Yeah, no, I'm over that argument. And then they're going to pay you back later on. They plot, all right? And how do they do that? They'll go to a party with a face on. They'll talk about you and gossip about you behind your back. They'll discredit you indirectly to other people. They'll show fake empathy. The other red flag when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, and go listen to my podcast on fake empathy of the covert narcissist, is that they will show you empathy, but they won't be consistent with it. And that will tell you that you're not dealing with a real one because 
people that generally are concerned about you or care about you will follow up to make sure that you are okay. A covert narcissist will pretend that they care and then they'll never bring it up again or they'll disappear on you because they don't want to hear it, okay? Because basically they are cowards and they're full of shit and they really don't care how you're doing. They don't care if you're sick. They don't care if you're going through a hard time and they will disappear after you tell them that. They'll pretend that they care at the time that you're telling them but then after that, they disappear. They don't pick up their phone. They disappear on you. Why? Because they don't fucking care. They're all about themselves. And some of these covert narcissists are actually sadistic and get joy out of seeing you suffer. Okay? So what did I say? It's actions and it's their body language. Okay? You can tell when somebody is genuinely you know, happy for you. Covert narcissists are not happy for other people. They're competitive. They hate to see other people doing well. So when you tell a covert narcissist, oh, I got this raise at my job or something like that, or, you know, next year I'm moving into a bigger house or, or getting a nicer car, what's that covert narcissist going to do? They're either not going to say anything, all right, and just give you a smirky smile, or they're going to interrupt the conversation and cut you off, or they're going to say something like, awesome, that's awesome, when in reality, it's it's all BS because they're giving you that fake, oh, that's awesome, when it's killing them inside, okay? And And if you know people and you're able to size people up, you'll be able to see that, you guys, all right? So the bottom line is there are always red flags, but you have to know the cat that you're dealing with. You have to know if you're dealing with a covert narcissist that doesn't communicate. You've got to know when you're dealing with an overt narcissist, all right? Covert narcissist, when they get into like a narcissistic rage, they internalize it, okay? It's not so much, you really got to have a covert narcissist back against the wall for them to lash out at you because they try to stay in control. They stay in control and in their minds, they're saying to themselves, okay, you want to do this? You want to cause a narcissistic rage? I'll get you back down the road. I'll get you. I'll get you. They're not going to confront you and have it out with you the way an overt narcissist would. Instead, they're going to plot on a way to hurt you, okay? This is why you don't want to tell these people when you're doing well because they're not going to be happy for you. They're going to try in any way they can to sabotage it. You can't trust a covert narcissist. You're dealing with a miserable person. You're dealing with somebody who's extremely, extremely insecure. And by you, you know, bragging about something or not even bragging, just trying to, you know, tell somebody about your joy and they're not going to be happy for you. They're going to either not want to be around you in the future or they're going to talk behind your back or something and say you're a bragger or they're going to downplay whatever you did to somebody else. They love to use other people. They love to triangulate and use other people to dislike you, okay? They talk, they're bad mouthers, okay? They're backstabbers and ba bad mouthers. So when somebody comes back to you and says, oh, the covert narcissist said blah, 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 blah about you, there is your red flag. They are talking about you behind your back, all right? When that covert narcissist gives you half a smile with half the, you know, lip going up, there is your red flag. That's not a fake smile. When the covert narcissist is staring you down with with disdain because they they angry or they don't like you, there is your red flag. When the covert narcissist gives you the fake tears and there's no tears coming down, there is your red flag. And, and when the covert narcissist starts getting emotional and crying and playing the victim, okay, and they're not taking accountability for anything they did. Instead, they're trying to make it like you're attacking them. Why are you getting so angry? Why are you attacking me? 
there is your red flag because they are not taking the accountability for things. And now they're sitting there trying to be emotional like the victim, okay? Instead of standing up and saying, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Or that was partly my fault. They will not take any kind of accountability. When the covert narcissist says, oh, you know, I'll be there for you. You can call me tonight. And they don't pick up their phone all night long. There is your red flag. When the covert narcissist makes plans over the weekend and say, promises you, oh, we're going to go out to this fancy restaurant and they've been talking about it, talking about it. And then the weekend comes and they cancel and then they cancel the following weekend and the following weekend after that, there is your red flag. So you guys, okay, I hope I'm, you know, getting through to you. There are red flags. It's the indirect red flags, but they're there. And how do I know? Because I know the I know the narcissist and the covert narcissist's basic nature. They can't keep up the phony act. They're, you know, their indirect, subtle behavior will show you who or what they are. Okay? But you've got to be on it and you've got to spot it. And the reason that people get caught up in, you know, being in a relationship for a long time with a covert narcissist and realizing 10, 15 years later, oh my God, I'm with a covert narcissist is because you didn't know. You didn't know enough about these covert narcissists that they're subtle, they're indirect, they play the good guy, they try to make you the bad guy. These are all your red flags, okay? Okay. So know them, and when you see this behavior with people in your life, whether it's a partner, whether it's a family member, whether it's a boss, whether it's a co-worker, whether it's a child, wh whoever you're dealing with, all right, these are your red flags. So understand this, when you're dealing with a narcissist, I don't care who the fucking narcissist is, whether they're overt, covert, uh, grandiose, you know, any kind of narcissist that you come across, there will always be red flags. And why is that? Because a narcissist never tries to show their true authentic self. All right. And the true self of somebody always comes through. Okay. You can't keep an act up for a long time. The true self will come through, but it's up to you to recognize those red flags. And when you see those red flags, the first thing that should come to your mind is, uh-oh, I can't trust this person. I'm dealing with a shady person who's putting on a fake front who's not authentic. They're not transparent. I cannot trust this person and I've got to back off from them, okay? So I hope that helps you. If it does, Please hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it. Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi. 
Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio, and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp one two three and also on instagram the game exp one two three okay and have a great day mm-hmm.